Okay, so again, using node voltage analysis to calculate the power delivered by the dependent voltage source. So eventually we would like to calculate the power for this dependent voltage source. Um, but for that, and because the problem says use node voltage analysis. So let's look at the voltages and find the voltages and the essential nodes, and then we go from there. So as you see, we have two essential nodes, one here and one there. And then we set the one of them as reference. So let's put this one as reference. So we assume the voltage is zero here. And then call this one, let's say V1. Label it as V1. And let's write the KCL here. So KCL at V1. So again, we look at all the currents going out. So for this one, it's V1 minus this voltage divided by 10. But what is this voltage? If you look at here, this is V equal to zero, this is ground. And then there is a 160 volt voltage source. So therefore this point has a potential of 160 volts, right? So therefore the current here, I, is V1 minus 160 divided by 10. So Z, V1 minus 160 divided by 10 plus. Now I look at this current is V1 minus 0 divided by 100. 1 minus 0 divided by 100 plus. OK. Now this part is needs more attention here. So I would like to find the this is the branch, and I would like to find the current that is going this way. Okay. So for that, um, we have to basically look at the voltage across, for example, from here to here. Yeah, so this is V1, this is zero, but then, if, if we didn't have this voltage source here, it was just V1 minus zero, zero divided by the, the resistance, equal, equal resistance, which was 30 plus 20, okay? But then here we have a voltage source here. So because of this voltage source, we have to basically be more careful. So the way that we can do that is um, somehow I move um, this voltage source basically next to the ground. So in other words, let me, let me write this down. So in terms of the current, I hope everybody agrees that it really doesn't matter the order of these elements, right? So I'm looking at the current, so it really doesn't matter. For example, if this is V1, if I rearrange basically my elements this way, I hope everybody agrees. So this is the ground. So the only thing that I did is I changed the order of them. And why I did that? Because the current that is going this way, it really doesn't matter which, which element comes first, okay? So it's just, so by doing that, what is the benefit of doing that? The benefit is that because this is zero, and then this is a voltage source, then I can, I will know the voltage here. It's zero plus 150 I sigma, whatever the value was here, okay? Now I know the voltage here. Then to find the current, again, I can do V1 minus this voltage divided by 50, 30 plus 20, okay? So this is, I guess, the only point in this example that we have to be careful. Um, so let me write this down, okay, this was all right. So V1 minus 160 divided by 10 plus V1 minus zero divided by 100 plus, now this part again, that, that was, I guess, the only, part that uh, was new way for me was, I guess. So it's V1 minus 150 I sigma divided by, so this is the potential here, and then divided by whatever resistance that it is, 30 plus 20. That is equal to zero. 
Okay. And we only have one variable, this is V1. So we can easily just uh, calculate it. Let me, let me do that. So, uh, oh, by, and by the way, we have I sigma. I sigma is de depends. Uh, so we have a dependent model source which has I sigma. What is I sigma? I sigma, again, you look at the direction. This is, this is a good example. The direction is going from bottom to top. So it's this voltage minus that divided by hot Q. Zero minus V1 divided by hundred minus V1 over hundred. Okay, so just <clears throat> replace this I sigma here, and we just solve for the V1. So let me do that. So we had V1 over ten minus. 160 over 10 to 60 plus V1 over 100 plus V1 over 50 minus basically 150 divided by 50 times I sigma, which is minus V1 over 100 become zero. Okay. Um, Minus and minus plus three over hundred. That's D one. Five two sixteen. Okay, so if you do the math, you can just easily get that D one is hundred. And please. Do that at home, like just calculate this and divide. I just didn't do that to save time, but you definitely do that. So V1 is 100 volts, that's great. And then the, the question wants us to find the power on the dependent source. Okay. So what is the, so I know the voltage for the dependent source. So let's say, let's say voltage of, uh, one fifty I sigma the voltage source. The voltage of that is one fifty times I sigma. Okay. So what is I sigma? So let's find I sigma. I sigma was minus V1 over hundred. So I sigma minus V1 over hundred. So minus one amp. So here, therefore, is minus one. The voltage is minus 150 volt. And what's the current? The current, as you see, was this current, which was, if I call it I. And we, we, we saw it before, right? V1 minus V1. This was I, right? V1 minus this divided by 50. So V1 minus, remember that voltage there. So my V1 is 100 minus the voltage across that, the, um, minus 150I sigma, which is minus 150 divided by. One hundred plus one fifty divided by fifty. Two hundred and fifty divided by fifty is five. Five m. Okay, so five m this way. So the power on one fifty by sigma is its voltage minus negative one fifty times. It's curious. Negative seven hundred and fifty. 
And because it's negative, it means that it's um, constant. So a couple of very important points here. I would say the most important part was this part. Then I wanted to find the current here, this current. So it was V1 minus this voltage source divided by the, the, the total resistance. And again, just to visualize this, it's as if I just basically change the order of this voltage source and this 20, because it, again, the current really doesn't care which, which element comes first. Then there are elements in the series, doesn't matter the order when you're looking at the, let's say current, for example, here. By just rearranging this way, now I can easily say V1 minus this voltage, which I know now, what is that? It's 150 IC divided by 50. Okay, so I guess that's the most important part of this question. And then you just see the problem. 